Hello and welcome to this lecture, Creating Classes and Objects. This is Manju Shabosle from KKV Polytechnic Nashik. In this lecture, we will be discussing the concept of class and object, and then we will implement class and object in OOP in Python. So let us start with the implementation part. Very first thing is the class. So what is class? class in python is a logical grouping of data and functions it gives the freedom to create data structures that contain arbitrary content and hence easily accessible suppose for example for any bank employee who want to fetch the customer details online would go to the customer class where all its attribute like transaction details withdrawal and deposit details outstanding debit etc would be listed out so how to define python classes classes are created by keyword class and then we provide the name of the class and at the last we put the colon after that when we press enter key we get the indentation as always to specify the block of class so very first thing that we can do is we can write the purpose or information about the class and which is known as document string and then we can write various class attributes which may include variables methods and functions for example class my class this is my second class here this is the doc string a is equal to 10 is the class member variable and this def function 1 is the function of the my class so this is how you can write the class in python the first string is called as doc string and has a brief description about the class doc string is not mandatory it is optional but it is recommended for further reference and you can write the purpose of class as a doc string so that afterwards if you want to know the use of that class you can find it out here is an example class my class colon is compulsory then when you press enter you will get indentation and in double quote you can write the doc string so this is a doc string i have created a new class is the doc string is here a class creates a new local namespace where all its attributes are defined and that attributes are nothing but the variables or methods that is data or functions there are some special attributes in that which begins with double underscore and end with double underscore for example if you want to display the doc string you can use the class name dot double underscore doc double underscore which will give you or print the doc string of the class now before going to this slide first we will go to the thorny and we will create the class and we will write the doc string and then we will try to print the doc string or any variable value or we will try to call the function using my class keyword and dot operator so let us go to the thorny and define the class now here i have taken a new file in which i am going to write the class so i'll start with the keyword class then suppose my class name is my class then colon and then i'll press enter so in double quote i can write here document string so this is a doc string now i will save this file suppose here I will provide my class demo this is the name of my python file so it is saved now and this is the definition of class here I can specify the variable suppose where is equal to 19 
and suppose I want to write any function then I will use def keyword in front of that I will write the name of function then colon and then suppose any statement like print hello this is a class function so this is all about the class definition and class doc string and class attributes like variable and function now of course until and unless we will create an object of the class we cannot call the function from the class so here we will use another method to print the value of this attribute like var or we will call this function fun or we can print the document string so let us see how to do that so let us move to the ppt now here as you can say this is the my class keyword now here my class is the name of class and dot my attribute is the name of class attribute that we want to call or use so in between we have to use this dot operator so in the example itself there is one document string one variable and one function and when I want to print the document string I can simply use the name of class dot double underscore doc double underscore if I want to print the value of any variable declared inside the class then I can use class name dot variable name and to call the function so here function is also an attribute of the class so I can use my class dot function name that is class name dot function name so all these things now we will do in our program now suppose here I have finished writing the definition of the class so I need to come at the start of the next line leaving the indentation of the class and now I will first try to print the document string so I need to use print statement and in bracket I have to use this my class name dot double underscore doc double underscore so let us first run this and see whether it prints the document string so yes it has printed this document string so this is the special name attached with any class which retrieves the document string from the class now let us try to print the value of another variable that is where variable so I will say here print the name of class is my class dot where let us run this so if you by mistakenly give the another class name or if the case is wrong as the python is case sensitive you need to provide the name of class as it is whatever you have used for the definition so as by mistakenly I have placed here small c it has given me the error so once again I will just correct it and run it now see this is the variable value 19 and at last we will try to print this hello this is the class function statement by calling the function fun so let us try this my class dot fun run yes so now this is the way how you can call the document string any attribute like variable or function now we will move to the ppt now we will discuss about 
the object object is created by simply assigning the class name to the object name here is an example so the object name is equal to class name we will create this object of this class for example if I have my class as a class then I can simply write object name is equal to my class opening and closing parenthesis then using this object I can call the document string the variable and the function so this is the second way to call the attributes or methods of the class which is object name with dot operator and the attribute or method name so let us try this now suppose in this example let us first clear the shell in this example if I don't want to use this my class keyword so I will just comment it by using the hash and now I want to create the object of this class so obj is the name of object is equal to my class and opening and closing parenthesis then using this obj I need to call the document string so of course I have to use underscore underscore doc underscore underscore but this whole thing I need to print out so I will use print function let us first run this yes it is printing the document string then we will try to print the variable so print obj dot where run so it is printing the value 19 but now when I try to call the function for example obj dot fun it will give you error because while you write or define the function inside the class you have to pass here self parameter which will be the object of that class and whenever you pass this self parameter at the time of calling that will be replaced by the object itself so whenever you write any definition of the function inside the class by default there should be a self parameter and then further remaining parameter you can specify using comma this self will not be considered at the time of calling but it will be replaced by the object itself so let us run after modifying this I am running the project so yes it is printing this hello this is a class function so this is how we can use the class object to call various attributes and methods of the class and this is how we create the object object name is equal to class name opening and closing parenthesis I hope after watching this video you can create your own class you can write some of the attributes and method inside the class and then you can either use my class or class name to call the attributes and method or you can create an object and you can call attributes and methods of the class using the object thank you all hello and welcome to this lecture constructors and class methods this is Manju Shavosle from KKVAK Polytechnic Nashik in this lecture we will discuss about how to write constructors in Python and how to write various class methods in Python under OOP in Python so let us start with this before writing any method inside the class first we need to think about this self keyword that we are going to use in the method for its first parameter so class methods must have an extra first parameter in method definition we do not give a value for this while calling the function but Python itself provides it 
if we have a method which takes no argument then also we have to give one parameter and the name of that parameter will be self this is similar to the this pointer in C++ or this reference in the Java when we call any method at that time we use the object name dot method name and we pass the arguments inside the parenthesis so it is like calling the function or method in any other another programming language but when we write the definition of method we have to use self keyword and then comma and then remaining parameters or whatever parameters you want to pass and while calling we have to skip that self parameter but we have to specify the values for remaining parameters and that will be automatically converted by the python into the class name dot method name and in bracket first is the object name and then the remaining parameters like on this slide it is given so if I have the method name method and this is my class object so my object dot method I will pass the parameters now at this time I will not consider or assume any value for the self parameter because after execution or at the time of execution that will be automatically converted by the python into my class that is your class name dot method name and in bracket your object name comma whatever the values you have passed for the parameters for that method I think now uh, you have got an idea about this self parameter now we will move to the next slide that is how to write constructor in python before that you should know about the constructor so in various programming languages like C++ or Java we have also used constructors in python we use constructor and to write the constructor we use double underscore init double underscore name or method name the constructors are useful when you create the object of that class automatically the statements that you have written within the constructor will be automatically executed so it runs as soon as an object of the class is created or instantiated the method is useful to do any initialization you want to do with your object so this is all about the constructor and in python we always use this init method with starting and ending double underscore this is also the special method as it is the constructor so example is given here we have a make class and this double underscore init double underscore in bracket of course we have to first pass the self parameter and then whatever parameter you want while calling the uh, constructor calling the constructor means while creating the object of that class so if I have written here print welcome to and this parameter name so as soon as I create this object M of class make and passing this parameter kkwp automatically the constructor will be called with the parameter kkwp and this message will be printed that is welcome to kkwp so this is all about constructor one more example is there that is class student and then the constructor is written here we will use here double underscore init double underscore here we are passing two parameters role and name self is always there so we are just assigning this role and name to the self dot name and self dot role number now here this self dot name means whatever parameter will come from the object that object parameter value will be assigned to this name parameter and role will be assigned to this role variable 
and at last we are just printing the name first and then role that means we are printing the second parameter and then first parameter so whenever I create this object and uh, of course as it has a constructor I need to pass here two parameters role and name so when I pass this role and name in this constructor the name is printed first and then role so I get the output RAM and 23 so this is the second example now for demonstration we'll go to the Thony and we'll write one example first we will write one class suppose class person colon and I want to write the constructor for this person class so I will write here def init underscore underscore here I need to pass first self parameter and then I will pass suppose name comma age and here I will just assign self dot name is equal to name self dot age is equal to age and finally I'm printing the both values so print self dot name comma self dot age so now this is done now I will create the object of this class person so obj underscore person is equal to person in bracket I need to pass here parameter so I will pass here sham comma 32 and I will just run this before that I need to save it yes the output is sham and 32 so this is how we write the class then constructor and then we pass the parameter and then we create the object and at the time of creating object we can directly pass the parameter or even if you don't have parameters you can keep it empty so if I want to change it like I don't want this I'll run this okay so this is how you can write the constructor I hope now you can create the constructor for the class in Python and you can create the object and you can write the constructor with and without parameter so now we will move to the next topic that is how to write class method so to write the class method of course we have to use the def keyword and we will write the name of the method in bracket we have to use first self parameter and then remaining parameters so here is an example you have to use this then colon and then you will write the statement and whenever you want to call this method or function you will just use the object dot function name and then this parameters so let us do this now in the same class I will write one more method one constructor is already there so I will use def my method and here I will pass self comma 
suppose number print So here I am printing the cube of any number which will be passed while calling the function. So here I need to call obj underscore person dot my method and in bracket I need to pass here number. So let us try this. I will just run. Yes the cube of the number is 64 so this is how you can write the class method so writing general methods and writing class method has only one difference that for general methods we don't use self parameter but for class methods we need self parameter as it is required while calling the particular function through the object if you are using the class name to call the function then you don't need to specify self parameter but if you are using the object to call the method at that time to replace that object name inside the uh, parenthesis you need to pass the self parameter and then remaining parameters so so this is all about class methods I hope now you can write the class methods and you can call them through the object of that class thank you hello and welcome to this lecture inheritance in python this is manjusha bosle from kkvak polytechnic nashik and in this lecture we will discuss about how to implement inheritance in python under op concepts of python so let us start with it first of all we should know the importance of the inheritance Inheritance is an important aspect of the OOP or OOP concepts. It provides the code reusability to the program because we can use an existing class to create a new class instead of creating it from scratch. In inheritance, the child class acquire the properties and can access all the data members and functions defined in the parent class. So a child class can also provide its specific implementation to the function of the parent class basically inheritance includes two types of classes first is parent class and second is child class where child class can inherit the properties of the parent class so let us see how to implement inheritance concept in the python so in python a derived class or child class can inherit base class or parent class by just mentioning the base class name in parenthesis in front of the child class name so here is an syntax so class is the keyword that will be used for the child class in front of class keyword you have to use child class name and in parenthesis you just have to put the parent class name then put colon and then you write the derived class statement including or calling or inheriting the base class properties a class can inherit multiple classes by mentioning all of them inside the parenthesis separated by comma so generally this is known as multiple inheritance but we will discuss this later the syntax is given here class then your child class name or derived class and in bracket you can write multiple base classes separated by comma and then the statement of the child class now let us see the example here is an animal class which has this speak definition and this is the dog class which has inherited this animal class so animal class has this speak definition or method and dog class has this bark method but still 
of course here we will create the object of child class only and through the child class you can call both the methods that is the method of parent class also and child class also so this is how you can call d is the object of dog d dot bark and d dot speak so the output will be both dog barking and animal speaking now now let us move to the thorny and we will implement one of the example for inheritance so let us first write the parent class class person in this first we will write the constructor of this class so in it here we have to pass one parameter self is always there and the parameter is name and we will just assign self dot name is equal to name now this is done for the constructor now we will write one more function that is get name and here we will use this self only and we will return the above name written self dot name suppose now this is done and I want to write the child class so class employee in bracket I will use the person class name as I want to inherit the properties of the person class in the employee class and now inside this employee class I will just use one method is employee here I need to pass one parameter self and I will just return true or false here so return true now this is done and now we have to create the object of the child class so I'll create obj underscore emp which is the object of employee class so equal to employee and then I will use obj underscore emp dot its employee so here I have created the object of the child class and I am calling the function or method of the child class so let us first run this and then we will try to retrieve or try to access the parent class methods so I will just save this first see why this error has occurred because when you create the object of the employee class here as employee is inheriting the person class and person has this constructor while creating the object the constructor is automatically called and it needs this parameter so when you create the object of child class you have to pass here one parameter because already that child class has inherited the properties of parent class person and person class has this constructor so you have to pass here parameter so I, I will pass here parameter in double quote suppose Mina let us first run and here you can see that there is no output but there is no error so it is successfully executed now if you want to 
print something like this then you have to use here print statement because return statement does not print anything so let us run once again yes it is returning the true this return true is executed now so this method is called now I want to call this get name method so I will use again the this object name dot get name method so get name has no parameter but it will just print the parameter which you have passed through this constructor so let us see what happens so here also get name is returning the name only it is not printing it so you have to use print statement here so print and then run so the output is Mina now how it has executed this and how it has printed this Mina and true that we will see so see when you create the object and when you pass the name parameter here automatically the constructor of this person class is called and when the constructor is called this self dot name is set to the name that is your parameter and inside get name you are just returning the value of this name so this Mina will be written by this get name so that return value we are just printing so Mina is printed here and afterwards we are calling this is employee function which is returning true value and we are using print statement to print that true value so it is printing true so this is how it gives this output now let us move to the ppt now we have seen the inheritance concept in the python now we will see various types of inheritance in the python so there is a single level multi-level multiple hierarchical and hybrid types of inheritance one by one we will see the examples so single level means here only one level is there that one parent class and one child class where child class inherit the properties of this parent class so class A is a parent class and class B is a child class which is inheriting the A parent class and the statements of both classes are written here and you can create the object of child class and you can call any method of any class using this child class object so let us run this in Thony same code now this is also an example of the single inheritance but still I'll take new file I'll paste the code and save it single inh demo save and now I will just say something here so if I say here print now here da means it is the a class method so I will write here a class method and for b I will write b class method so whenever I will create the object of b class and I will call any method you will come to know that which method is actually called so this is class A the definition of class A is DA and inside that I have written this print then I have written second class class B which is inheriting class A colon then definition of this DB which is the method of B class B class method so now I am creating the object of B class and calling both the method I will also add here self parameter as these are the class methods and now this is the object of child class 
and we are calling both the methods from child and base class now let us run this project yes so here this method will print this statement a class method and this will print b class method so this is called as single inheritance where only one parent and one child class is there now let us move to the ppt and next type of the inheritance next is multi level and in multi level one base class is inherited by another child class which is also a base class for another child class so there is a sequence or chain of the base class and child class where some child class are base class also so now let us implement this example so i will just modify the previous example code now in this example i'll just add one more class class suppose c and that class c will inherit the properties of class b the method will be for class c so dc and it will print the statement c class method so now a is the parent of b and b is the parent of c so you need to create the object of c and you can call any method like da db or dc so we will just call the dc method and let us run this once again we will just revise it class a with da function or method class b with db method and class c with dc b is inheriting a and c is in inheriting b the object of c class is created and the the all methods are called here by using this c class let's let us run this yes it is printing all the statements from all the methods so this is called as a multi level inheritance now the next is multiple and the meaning of multiple is one child class has multiple parent classes so here a and b are the parents of c and the object of this c class can call any method from any base class or itself so let us try this example so i will just modify the same code so class a is one of the base class b is also another base class and c is inheriting both the base classes so i will just create the object of c class and i will call the methods from all the classes including c class so let us run this so yes it is printing all the statements from all the methods so this is called as a multiple inheritance generally in another programming languages multiple inheritance is implemented through the interfaces but in python we can implement it as it is now let us move to the ppt and next type of the inheritance now the next is hierarchical and the meaning of hierarchical is there is one parent class and multiple child classes so let us implement this example now in this example i have one parent class a and b is one of its child so b will inherit a and c will also inherit a so of course if i create the object of c class i can only call da and dc to call this db i need to create the object of b class but if i create b class object then i can call also this da so let us first create the object of c class and try to call all the methods and we'll see what is the error 
so this is C object has no attribute DB so C can't access the method of B class so you need to explicitly create the object of B class so we will create here object of B class and then using the OBJ we can call DA and DC and OBJ1 we can call here also we can call DA and we can call DB let us run this so yes this first A class method is called by C object and second A class method is called by B object so this is how we can implement this hierarchical inheritance now the next type is hybrid and this includes the mixture of all the types of inheritance so this is form this is the form which combines more than one form of inheritance and it is the blend of more than one type of inheritance so i hope you have understood the concept of inheritance in python and you can implement the program for it thank you hello and welcome to this lecture polymorphism method overloading and overriding this is manju shabosle from kkva polytechnic nashik in this lecture we will discuss about polymorphism concept in python which includes method overloading and method overriding so let us start with it what is method overloading the concept of polymorphism means having many forms and this overloading means you can write the same name function but with different arguments in one class so in programming polymorphism includes two concepts first is method overloading which includes same name function with different argument in one class and method overriding which includes same name method in parent as well as in child class with same arguments so like other languages for example method overloading in c++ uh, python does not support method overloading we may overload the methods but can only use the latest defined method that is last method whatever we write with the same function name that will be used when you call the function or method for previous methods with the same name the, it will give you the error so suppose for example here we have a student class and we have disp method this first disp method has two parameter role and name and second has nothing and here we are printing the role and name and here we are printing the welcome message so when we create the object of student class and when we try to call this disp method with role and name which is the first method written inside the class at this time it will give you the error but if you call the second method or current or latest method or last method then there will not be an error and it will give you the output so if you want to implement this kind of example you can do like this so you can write a function with any parameter with the value none and uh, whenever you call the function it is up to you to pass the parameter or not so if you have two parameter with one parameter as a none value then you can pass the one parameter while calling the same function or you can pass two parameters but this concept is not overloading concept it is some another concept because here we are explicitly using print a and print a comma b that's why it is give you the output it is giving you the output this 899 and 2345 so this concept is not overloading concept and of course python does not support the overloading so now we will just implement this example or this kind of example and you will come to know that what happens actually 
so let us go to the thorny and do this now in this suppose I have class my class colon I have my fun function suppose with self parameter and if I write here return 5 the same name function fun and with one parameter suppose number if I return here number suppose and now I will create the object of this class obj is equal to my class and if I say obj dot fun as first function has no parameter my expectation is it should return the value 5 so as it is returning it I need to use print statement to print that value and now we will save the file now run it now it will give you the error that is missing one required positional argument because the latest function need one argument and we have passed uh, zero arguments so here we need to pass the argument suppose here I am passing 34 and if I run this then it will print the value 34 ok so here this function is in neglected or the 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 first function is not executed or called the second one is considered uh, even if I write again one more function after this fun so the same function which suppose n1 comma n2 and if here I return n1 plus n2 and if here first I will pass 0 parameter and if I run this then it will give you error that is 2 required positional parameters so as you can see the first error was missing 1 required parameter and now second is 2 required so it will consider the latest definition so here I need to pass 2 numbers and if I run this it will give him the answer neglecting previous 2 function definition with the same name but different parameters so this is how uh, you can see that python uh, does not support the method overloading now we will move to the me method overriding so here I told you that you can go for this solution but this is not method overloading now talking about method overriding you can always override your parent class method by creating the object of parent class so if you have same function or method inside parent class and same name function or same name method inside child class and if you want to call the particular function or method then you have to create the object of that particular class like if you want to call the parent method then you need to create parent object so one reason for overriding parents method is because you may want special or different functionality in your subclass so child class is override the attributes and behavior from the parent class now how to do that first we'll see the example now in this example you can see there is a class parent with my method method child also has the same name method with same number of or name of argument and if I want to call both the methods from both the parent and child classes then I will create both the object and I will call the specific method so now this we will implement in Thony and we will see the effect so let us move to the Thony so in the same example I will do the modification so suppose this is my class and this is a parent class and in that suppose I have this function with two parameters 
and I am returning the addition of that two numbers or two parameters. I have one other class suppose child and child is inheriting parent class my class and in that also same method is written so of course if I want to call this fun so if I want to check the effect I will just change the operation here and first I will create the object of child class so obj is equal to child and print obj dot fun that means this fun will be called and with this two parameters so let us run this first I will clear the shell run so the answer is multiplication of these two numbers but if I want to call the th this function my class function and of course it will return the addition I need to create the object of parent class so my class objp dot fun 23,67 and this I need to print because it is returning the value so if I run this then I'll get two values first is the multiplication of both the number and second is the addition so this is how we can perform the overriding in Python so I hope you have understood the concept of polymorphism that is method overloading and method overriding in Python thank you all hello and welcome to this lecture encapsulation abstraction and data hiding in Python this is Manjusha Bosle from KKVAK Polytechnic Nashik in this lecture we will discuss about the implementation of encapsulation abstraction and data hiding in Python so let us start with abstraction in Python in Python an abstraction is used to hide the irrelevant data or class in order to reduce the complexity and it also enhances the application efficiency so this abstraction concept under OOP is also used in another programming languages also and that has similar purpose that is to hide the irrelevant data in Python abstraction can be achieved by using abstract classes and interfaces so it is the process of hiding the real implementation of an application from the user and emphasizing only on usage of it for example if you are using any electronic gadget you don't know how it is implemented but you know how to use it so a class that consists of one or more abstract method is called the abstract class and abstract methods means which do not contain any implementation part the declaration part is only there and that are included in the class which is called as abstract class and abstract class can be inherited by the subclass and abstract method gets its definition in the subclass so in short abstraction classes are meant to be the blueprint of the other class so uh, they are useful when we are designing large function and they are helpful to provide the standard interface for different implementation of components so in Python there is ABC module the name ABC is given here so this is the name of module ABC we have to import this ABC capital ABC class which is the abstract class from this ABC module and 
for that we can write from keyword name of this ABC module import keyword and then ABC class and then whatever class we want to make as abstract class we will just inherit this ABC class in that new class so when you write class class name and in parenthesis this capital ABC this class become the abstract class now in short we import the capital ABC class from the small ABC module so this is the example from ABC import ABC and this abstract method is also the component of this ABC module which is used to define the abstract methods which implementation is not given in the abstract class but the implementation is given in the uh, remaining classes or the subclasses so here car is the abstract class because it is inheriting this capital ABC class and in that this def mileage is the abstract method because here we are using pass keyword which means the implementation is not written here and its implementation is in the this Tesla car or in Suzuki class or in duster class so this mileage is known as abstract method and this car is known as abstract class this car become abstract class because it is inheriting this capital ABC class which has taken from this ABC model so for this car class which is a parent class of Tesla Suzuki and Duster this all classes are implementing this mileage abstract method inside the subclasses so whenever we create the object of particular subclass we can call the method and we'll get the output so as I told you we have imported the ABC model to create the abstract base class and car become the abstract class because it is inheriting the ABC class and the abstract method is mileage and we have then inherited the base class from the three different subclasses we created the object to call the abstract method of particular class now talking about data encapsulation encapsulation means wrapping of data which includes variables and methods into a single entity known as encapsulation and it is one of the concept in the OOP which shields or restrict the access to the variables and methods directly so we can prevent the data from accidental or unauthorized modification and it also makes object a more self-sufficient or independent functionality so in Python we don't use private keyword but we have some symbols so even in Python we can implement encapsulation now a class variable that should not directly be accessed should be prefixed with an underscore is the convention in the Python because we want to make it private so a single underscore make any variable a private variable and we cannot access it directly but still if you are not a beginner and you know Python in detail you can do it nothing stops you from doing that a double underscore make any variable as a strong private variable and it is harder to access but still it is possible to access and uh, in Python instead of using that access specifier like private protected or public we use underscores single or double underscore to make or to encapsulate the data now suppose in this example if I have this robot class and this is the constructor of this robot class and suppose I have three variables self.a 
self dot underscore b so this is private and this is strongly private because here I'm using double underscore and suppose I use here object of that class and I'm trying to access this three variables I can access a I can access b but I cannot access c because it is strongly encapsulated so this is how you can implement the concept of encapsulation in the Python now how to hide the data or what is the concept of data hiding now the meaning of data hiding is you can hide the internal details of any object so the object attribute may or may not be visible outside the class definition and you need to name attributes with a double underscore prefix and those attributes then are not be directly visible to outsiders so python protects those members by internally changing the name to include the class name so if you want to access and you are not the beginner if you know the python in detail you can access such attribute by using the object name dot underscore class name underscore underscore attribute name so we'll see the example for it so suppose I have this counter class and I have this secret variable which is prefixed with two underscore and has the value zero suppose in the class method I am using this secret and I am increment, uh, incrementing the value of this secret and printing it so at the time of object creation I can create the object of this counter class and I can call the method this count but when I ask to print the value of this this secret variable or which is the attribute of counter class it will give me the error but if instead of this directly accessing this secret variable if I use single underscore class name double underscore attribute name then I can get the value so let us implement this example in the thony so now I will use one class here suppose class my class and in my class I have one variable suppose where is equal to 67 and suppose I have one method suppose fun So now I will just create the object of this my class. So obj is equal to my class. And if I try to use this fun, then we'll see what happens. Let us run this. First I need to save this. So now so now here I need to use self keyword so self dot let us once again run it see the error is underscore my class underscore underscore where is not defined so here this has the error so in print statement also we have to use self dot underscore underscore where let us run it once again and the answer is 69 so this function will return you 69 because now 67 is incremented by 2 and if I say obj dot 
underscore underscore where and I want to print the value of this strongly private variable so if I do so and if I run this then I will get the error that my class object has no attribute underscore underscore where because inside the function it is accessible and you can call the function but if you try to access it individually or privately it is not possible but still you can use here the name of class for example my class and before that you have to put one underscore and if you run this then you will get the value 69 if I escape this and if I run this you will get the 67 so this is how you can do data heading in the python now I hope that you understood the concept of data encapsulation data abstraction and data heading in python thank you